AEW. This is professional wrestling redefined. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to AAW, Professional Wrestling Redefined, here on Matty GTV. I'm Dave Prezak, and we're getting things kicked off this week with a three-way tag team bout for the AAW Tag Team Championship, as the champions Dan Lawrence and Marcus Crane set to take on the Hooligans and Zero Gravity. Let's go to the ring. Team, and we're getting things kicked off. The Tag Team Championship is on the line. Three-team elimination matchup. Just want to point out some history on this one. Last month in the Berwyn Eagles Club, Zero Gravity and the Cutter Brothers were in that tournament match that got thrown out, which was very unpopular. The new executive VP, Joey Eastman, appearing at the top of the show, explaining, whoa, we'll get back to that explanation in a minute. This one's breaking down quick. The fight is on. Cutter Brothers getting a piece of ZG. They're left over from last month. Yeah, the these were the two teams that were disqualified in that matchup. Uh, because it got out of hand. The referee had no other choice but to call for a disqualification. Well, the referee was actually being repeatedly assaulted in that match, and I do agree with that. Whoa, ZG's turning the tables on the Cutter Brothers early. We can have some high flying in mind right here. Buck Nasty on the outside. Oh. Dive to the floor right on top of the Hooligans. Starts off early. That was impressive, but I want to point out that the current champions, the Wet Bandits, are taking their time on the outside. The Wet Bandits? Yes. Is that really their official name? Yes, yes. That's what they, that's what they like to call themselves. And Lawrence and Marcus Graydon. Similar to the Pounce. Both of them. Wipe out zero gravity. Oh, it looks like we're getting the... Oh, oh, getting something going fly. there. Whoa, whoa. Oh, oh. Uh, okay, a little miscommunication there. I don't think he intended to knee him in the midsection. Whoa! But right now, Marcus Crane. Crotch and Nelson lift into a big slam. Now here's where we've seen the hooligans excel. Whoa! Moon salt, leg drop, combination. Those are some big guys doing that in there. Whoa! Lawrence eats a slam. They're like a redneck version of the headhunter. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh! Where's Victor Quinones? Dead. <laughs> yes, actually he is. Sorry. Oh, zero gravity takes oh. the air once again. Didn't quite get all that missile drop kick, but Gaikia got enough of it. You know, since this elimination style, uh, it's in no one's really best interest to be inside the ring where you could get eliminated That's early right. in the matchup. Whoa, Gaikia up and no, back down. Oh, catches them up over the top. Wow. Nice, double stomp, inverted DDT combination. I was gonna call it a slop drop. Slop drop. Oh! The rain drop. Through. Big Enzigiri. Oh, just clubbering him down, you know, the hooligans. Very accomplished wrestlers, but they're not afraid. They have been in their fair share of soccer riots. That's where they get it. Oh! All that high, whoa! Out to the apron to get out of harm's way was CJ Esparza. And now, Gakia. Whoa! Recovers from that right there. Oh, huge crossbody from the top. And Esparza two. got a two count. No, I thought it was a little early for that, but anything can happen in AEW and often does. Well, some more teamwork here from Zero G, but in comes Marcus Crane, putting a stop to what they had in mind. Whoa. Oh! The experience throwing him into a spear in his own partner. Has him hooked. Whoa. Flip around into a face buster. What <laughs> a big boot from DL there. Whoa. Stop of the forearm shiver. Got out of harm's way. <laughs> He's caught. Oh, they told me about this one. Lawrence has him in a crucifix. Yes. That's the passion of the crane right there. Man. Oh, but Hooligan, very smart, able to roll out. Yeah, that extra second or so might have saved them from being eliminated from this matchup. Dan Lawrence sent to the floor. Toss to the outside. Ooh, watch that post. We've talked about that before. Well, Hooligan's getting on the same page here. Marcus Crane into the corner. Devin throwing him in. Mason weighing in the corner. Oh, here it comes. Oh. Big running boot. And then he's down. Oh, geez. I know this one's gonna end up. Here it comes. Oh! Just brutalizing the experience. Still more. Total decapitation. No! 
That could be it right here for Dan Lawrence and Marcus Crane. Oh, DL in there. Saving his partner. He doesn't want to lose that belt. Oh, ho, ho. just paced him with a big haymaker. Into the Lawrence looking over in the corner, but caught on the shoulder. He's caught. Oh! Nice DDT. DL may not be the most uh, athletic person in the match, but he certainly knows what he's doing in there, knows how to move those long, lanky limbs. He's a veteran of competition. Oh. Longest tenured person in uh, AEW at this moment. Oh, oh, oh! MCE posturing after that move. Ah, yeah. Oh, geez. A lot of kick. Just and wow. Crane's not so pretty anymore. Hits the ropes. Sit down, clothesline, turning the MCE inside out. Gaikia comes running in. Foot caught. Oh. Kick to the belly welly, both of them. Gaikia cleaning house. Trying to fight off both of them all by himself. No, they're like five times his size combined. Well, if he would have hit him quick, he's always got the puncher's chance. Oh, Gaikia in for a wheelbarrow. He's picked up. Oh. Slap across the face. More to disorient than damage, but oh, now he's got him hooked. Looks like he's bringing him up, but no. Took too much time. Esparza was able to save his partner right there from the double team work that the hooligans were going for. On blower, both Esparza knees coming in the in. chest. Oh, here it comes. Oh. Knees to the back as well. Oh, Buck Nasty getting up on the ring apron. That didn't work out very well. Nope, that didn't work out very well either. Sparza with Dan Lawrence, standing switch. Who's gonna get the advantage oh, here? Oh, caught him with that drop kick. Little misdirection on the part of the jumping spider, CJ Sparza. Oh, oh, from the floor with the chair. Couldn't quite see from our vantage point, now a small package. Well, zero gravity, the first team eliminated from this matchup. Oh. Zero gravity has been eliminated. Hogan's wasting no time, continuing to uh, brutalize Marcus Crane here. Not giving him any, oh, looks like he's got him caught up in an assisted jawjacker double stomp. Oh. This could be a quick finish right here, a la the Lucha matches in Mexico. Took too much time before going for the cover after the maneuver. MCE posturing to the crowd, caught in that wheelbarrow they were setting up earlier. Oh, DL's got him hooked. Oh, Rabbit punches him in the back of the head. Oh! Lawrence punches for here. everything he's worth. And he got what? him! What? Marcus Crane able to roll him up what? and got the three count. The Wet Bandit stealing one away. If you would like to advertise your business, product, or website with AAW Pro Wrestling, email us at sales at aawrestling.com. Don't forget, AAW returns to 115 Bourbon Street, Marionette Park, Illinois, on January 23rd. Featured on the card, the AAW Heavyweight Champion Eddie Kingston will defend against Josh Alexander. Tickets are on sale right now at aawrestling.com. Right now, it's time for our feature matchup this week, as we're going to see Keith Walker taking on Rhino. Let's head to the ring. You can put that chain down, or I'll shove it up your ass. And then when I'm done doing that, I'm going to gore your little whore over there. I don't know if we necessarily need to see any of that happen. I, I know I don't. That's really more of an Easter egg kind of thing. You want to see it? To each their own. As I recall, uh... Phil Colvin was a big fan of the smooth helmet being worn by Nikki Mayday there. Smooth helmet? Yes. She should manage Dick Justin. Yes. Brings up the joke, how are Milk and Peter North alike? <laughs> uh, how? They both come in quartz. Mm.
Peter North, former gay career as Matt Ramsey, decided to cross over. Denied it for some time, that's true. I'm, I'm uh, reminded by our stagehand here, uh, Dan Marco. Thanks for setting up the ring, kid. You give me a water or something? Great, thanks. Penis Colada, yes, here we go. Terry Garvin's dead, right? Uh, the war machine, yeah, Terry Garvin dead. Just making sure. Ripper Collins dead. Is, that Mel is, I'm he still, is he still rubbing people's feet somewhere? I, I don't know. I wonder if he's going to get a 10 bell. That'll be interesting. Two big powerhouses to do battle in this one. Rhino and Keith Walker. Uh-oh. Big lock up. This one, the classic example of uh, win ugly. Oh. Crowd definitely behind Rhino in this particular matchup. Rhino, you don't really get an appreciation of how wide he is until you stand by him. That's a big individual there. Walker with the uh, height advantage in this matchup. Ooh, both men in for the collar elbow. Of course, Rhino with the uh, professional wrestling experience advantage. Veteran of the ring. He's been in. Years? Yeah, international superstar. Years. Spent some time in the big leagues now, picking his shots, going through the. Bro, this is the big leagues. What are you talking about? We're on Roku, bro. That's right, Matty G. What's up? Bill Colvin, hope you're having a wonderful night. Oh, Nikki took off her helmet. That's uh, notable. No longer protected. No longer protected. I wouldn't leave the thing on. I mean, uh, we saw Rhino spear Kevin Harvey through a table previously. She could she could be the worst for wear after this thing's over. That's right. And Rhino did threaten to give her the gore. Oh. So why remove the helmet? Come on, strategy. Yes, I always like to pay partic have particular attention paid to my helmet. But, well, wow, these guys just bullying each other in the ring. Nobody giving an inch here. Rhino trying to build up some momentum for this shoulder block. Comes running in. Oh. Still doesn't work. Wow. Oh, calling to the crowd. They want to see it. He's going to get this man off his feet by hook or by crook. Ducks a line, running in, jumping shoulder block. And wisely, Walker out to the floor to try to get out of harm's way, but here comes Harm. Giving him the what for ringsiders, just scattering for higher ground here. Harm has arrived in the front row. <laughs> oh. Swinging chairs. I can hear bottles being tipped over. I think they're just behind the bar. <laughs> oh. Now Walker with the first definitive blow of the contest so far, staggering Rhino back. Still on his feet, though. Jeez, that's a lot of lumber being thrown in there. Changing chops. Both men still roughly equal. Referee Andy Long letting him brawl outside. Oh no, was Keith Walker watching uh, Merrick Brave earlier and he's going to do like a shooting star off the bar or something? Yes, I believe Keith Walker, oh, Keith Walker is going Walker to do a shooting out, star. Bro. Yes. When the time is right. He's been saving it. Double X handle off the bar by Rhino. Kicking his sticking teeth in. <laughs> Oh, now Rhino pulling Walker. He's going to throw him back into the ring. Nikki Mayday on the apron headed for uh, safety there. Oh, pulls him back into that post. Back first. Encouragement from Nikki. Well, it is good, you know, when everybody's booing in your face to have that one person pulling for you. That can often give you the moxie that you need. Oh. The man they call Vader. 
don't, I don't know, man. <laughs> I prefer to think Stan Stasiak myself, but. Oh, another hard chop. I don't give a fuck. Oh, Walker feels good after that one. Rhino Lay does not. Laying another one in there. Whoa. Apparently it is Rhino. Not Keith Walker. Jeez. Not Vader. Not Nick Gage. Nick Gage, isn't he in jail? He is robbed the bank, man. Wore a scarf to cover his face on ring entrances, but not when he robbed the bank. Fair enough. Brilliant, man. Walker firing away. I always wonder what the end game is for somebody that robs a bank. Like, like, how do you get out of that? I think he wanted to go. Word on the street is he wanted to go to jail. Oh, okay. To get himself out of society for a while because of other things he was involved with. Oh, fair enough. It's just a theory. I don't know if it's true. Looking for those three hots on a cot? I mm, understand. Yes. Rhino digging down for some energy. Is Ry yeah, Walker. Rhino looking for something right now. Walker continuing to pound away. Whoa. I just, I want to say, yeah, Rhino is on his knees, but, oh, well, that just takes my... Hook the leg, man! I was going to say, that takes my point out there, because of all the blows that were being thrown, they were still, still basically upright. Now just a blatant two-handed choke on the mat. Oh. Keep that in mind, maybe a belly to back suplex, but Rhino fighting it off. Nope, there it is. Oh. Able to get the maneuver. That's almost 600 pounds hitting the mat there. Again, didn't really hook the leg. That's both of them there. I'm not saying Rhino weighs 600 pounds. Right, I know. When Rhino comes here, I always just say, sir. As you should. Yep. Oh. Shot to the midsection. To the bread basket. Rhino needs to do something here to regain the advantage of the match. Fighting from underneath. Several shots to the midsection. Oh, now back to his feet. Still staggering a bit. Now throwing Walker in. Reversal. Oh, eats that buckle hard. Connected with the buckle. Tumbled right down after the impact. Oh, but Walker taking a lot of time getting his breath back. In for the cover, hooks the leg. He must have heard you, Dave. Nikki Mayday, an yeah. angelic voice. Really? Yeah. I think that's the first time anyone has said that. It's like an angel's choir. Oh, Rhino Bullen trying to get back up to that vertical base, takes some of the leverage away from that chin lock. Oh, Walker just cranks it in there with a guy with arms that size, cranks it in. Yeesh. You really want to be anywhere else. How much energy is he taking out of Rhino here? One falls twice, one more, and this thing's over. Oh, nope. Still in it. Still in it. Fans giving him that encouragement to fight back to his feet. Shot to the midsection. And again. Wow, both men stagger, and Rhino hits the ropes. And right around the throat, but a boot to the gut. Throws him in. Reversal. Walker he ran right into that elbow. Oh, no, Rhino up to the second. Launched himself off the second rope with the shoulder tackle. Only gets two, though. Not at two. Match taking its toll on both athletes. Oh. Rhino still staying on his feet, though. That's right. Whoa. In the belly. Not too often you see somebody belly to belly suplex Keith Walker, <laughs> but Rhino just did it. That's true. It's not your ordinary wrestler. Come on, Keith, get up! Keith! Walker pulls himself back up in the corner, shoulder right to the midsection. Not really the gore, just a shoulder block. Aaron's carry. Walker gets off the shoulders. Oh, discus punch. 
Belly to belly of his own! Almost looked like an overhead. No. Only two. Probably the closest you're ever going to get to anyone overhead suplexing Rhino. Rhino flat on his back. Walker eyes him up. Sending to the second. And Rhino's back on his feet. He catches him. Oh. Oh, no. He's setting up those rink. Putting those legs on the outside. Oh, no. We've seen this in the past. That's usually a setup for a superplex. That's a big boy up there. Well, it seems to be what he has in mind. Oh, geez. Walker trying to fight it off. Just trying to lean forward a little bit to put that balance off. No, now Rhino has him hooked. Trying to get it. Oh, God. Superplex. That took a lot out of Rhino just executing the maneuver, though. As he crawls to maybe go for a cover. Shoot the half, pull him over for a cover. Oh, it just puts an arm over. Two and a half. No, Walker was able to roll a shoulder on that. Both men showing signs of fatigue. Well, they both have absorbed a lot of punishment. And just executing maneuvers on someone the size of their opponent Oy. has taken a lot of energy out of them. Rhino slowly pulling himself up. Rhino. First one back on his feet. Walker trying to get back up himself. Oh, Walker got those jelly legs going. Changing shots. Oh, both men just reaching back for those. Oh, Rhino having the upper hand. Gets up going, hits the ropes, eats a boot. Still on his feet, ducks the line. Rhino come running in. Gore! Gore! This could be it. No! Wow, that's about as close to three as you can get without it being three. Walker kicked out of the Gore. Rhino a bit. He's surprised. Not too many wrestlers have done that. A bit discombobulated at that development. Rhino needs to follow up here. Maybe a second gore will earn him the victory here against Keith Walker. It's like he's just waiting for the right moment as Walker tries to pull himself back up on the other side of the ring. Walker very smartly pulling himself up next to the buckle. Staggering out to mid-ring. Oh! It's that knee right in the midsection. Oh, they gosh! Carry it from Walker. Whoa! Whoa. He got it! Whoa! Keith Walker has pinned Rhino! Show your support for AAW by getting all of the latest AAW t-shirts at ProWrestlingTees.com slash AAW ProWrestlingTees.com is the official t-shirt provider for AAW Professional Wrestling Redefined. Another great week of AAW here on Maddie GTV. Be sure to check us out on Twitter, AAW Pro. Visit us on the web, AAWrestling.com, and check out AAW. DVDs and MP4s at smartmarkvideo.com and we will see you next week. AAW is professional wrestling redefined. 15 minute time on the draw tonight with Lewis Linden here at One Twisted Christmas. And after the match was over, after it was all said and done, all the dust had settled, the smoke had cleared, the fans came to their feet and they requested, they wanted five more Five more. I have no problems with going five more minutes. With a talented guy like Lewis Linden, hell, I offered him a shot with the Heritage title when I had it. He never came to me, he never answered. But that's fine, five more minutes. But in that one little bit of opportunity that I had to say yes, I thought about it. And I thought better of that decision. I don't need to go five more minutes with Lewis Linden. I don't have to go five more minutes with a man that hasn't proven himself to me 
and as far as I'm concerned, to anyone else here, to be deserving of standing on the platform on the level that I stand on here in AAW. I don't need to beat Lewis Linden. I'm all about getting that winner's share of the purse, but I don't need to get it with Lewis Linden. You know who I need to get the winner's share of the purse against? Eddie Kingston, the AAW heavyweight champion, the man that I've been calling out for months. For months. And here I sit. Do you see a championship over my shoulder like there should be? No, you don't. I believe every lie that I've ever told with the one truth that remains constant is that I am the best goddamn wrestler in this company. I don't need a title to prove it, but I want the title to prove it. To prove it to every single person that thinks that I'm not as good as I say I am. I'm worth the money and then some. So Kingston, you go out there and you drop a fall to the Monster Mafia. You get pinned, middle of the ring, one, two, three. And now they will stake their claim at a title that I deserve. So if they're going to create an opportunity for themselves, then maybe the money is just going to have to roll up in there and create an opportunity for himself. You want to be a little bitch, you want to be a coward and not answer my challenge, but look to everyone else in this company, it's fine. Like I said, I'm not afraid of you. I will never back down from you. And the moment that I make my opportunity present itself and I step in the ring with you, and I take that title away from you, everyone else will know that everything that I've been said has not been a lie. It's been the absolute truth. Truth that I, you, Eddie Kingston, and everyone else in this company can put money on. AAW. This is professional wrestling. Redefined.